Hello, everyone. Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art here, and I'm thinking about some St. Patrick's Day projects. So I have my little little Irish gnome here, and we're going to paint an Irish gnome on this wooden board. Just a plain piece of board that I had cut at Home Depot. And let me try the dimensions. I should remember this, but if you could paint this on anything, you could paint this on those 10 by 20 canvases that you um, find, which I use a lot. I love those gallery wrapped canvases. I just find them at Michael's. Um, so let me just bring up your comments too. So please, if, you, if you're watching, let me know. And I'd love to see, um, see where you're from. So anyways, this is a wooden board. Like I said, you could paint it on a canvas. You could paint it on the board. This is two feet, that's 24 inches by, it's actually a six um, inch board. It comes down to be about five and a half. But if you go into Home Depot, they will happily cut these up for you. I just went in um, yesterday and got some more. So I'm gonna just sketch them on. You don't really need to have a tracing for this. If you feel like you really wanna have a tracing, you can certainly contact me and I will make one up for you. That's easy peasy for me to do. I'm going to get rid of this banner so that you can see the whole design there. Um, so I'm just going to use a piece of chalk. I have chalk handy whenever I'm painting. It's a great way to sketch onto your canvas, onto your board, onto whatever you're working on. It erases so easily, uh, so it really works out nice. So we're just going to make a cute, simple gnome. You'll see how easy he is. He's going to have, of course, his big Irish beard. We're going to do like a red ginger no so i'm gonna make actually i'm gonna make a real tall hat on him so let's start about here so this is going to be his little hat i like to make them sometimes just a little curvy and what i'm going to do is maybe curve his hat over and put a little shamrock hanging from his hat what's the great thing about um gnomes is you don't have to draw their faces they just get a nose they just get a brown nose and then the beard covers most of their body. So we're just going to give him a little beard. This will just be his body, very simple. And a couple little feet. So we'll do a couple little feet here. And that's all we need for a sketch. So you don't have to get really involved. You just got the basics, his little cap, his beard, his little body, a couple of feet. And that is that. When we get along, I'm going to paint some shamrocks in the background, and I have a really cool technique to paint little one-stroke shamrocks that I think you're going to like. Oh, let me bring up the comments, too, because um, I'd love to see. Hey, hey Lisa Marie. A, a weird little echo. Oh, well, I want to sound cool, but let me just make sure my... Um, oh, I know. Why. Hang on. Make sure my... Um, volume is down on my computer. So if that's better, let me let me know if that's better. So simply, uh, we're going to use our acrylic paints. They're just the craft paints. You guys are, you know, have these around, I'm sure. You could use your heavy body acrylics. You can use any acrylic paint you have. I've got out to start. I've got my flesh color. Um, I'm working a little diagonally today, so you can see this whole board. So I'm a little weird between both cameras. I've got a flesh color. I've got my white. I'm going to use a ginger beard, so I've got some burnt sienna and some orange. I've got a little bit of a salmon color, a little pink, just to, uh, for his nose to give him a little uh, blush on it. I'm using the dark phthalo green, just any dark green you have. I've got my yellow because I want to mix a little bit of shades there. And I've got like a lime green, which you can make. You don't need to have all the colors. If you just have a dark green, mix it with some yellow and you will get that lime green. Maybe a little touch of white will make it show up. Oh, hi, Janine. Okay, hopefully, hopefully the echo is better because I believe I turned the volume down. There. So hopefully we're better. So acrylic paint, something to paint on, surface, board, canvas, a few brushes. I'm just using some of my acrylic synthetic brushes. And let's just jump in and get started. So I'm going to paint his face. Um, his, his, actually, no, he doesn't have a face. Usually I would do the face first, so never mind. Started his cap, work down. I want to do him in shades of green. You can use any color you want. This is a great technique for any type of gnome. If you want to paint him for Easter, you could just use pastels, put a little Easter egg on his hat maybe, or Easter eggs down here. Basically, the gnome is going to be painted the same way. This is wood, Lisa Marie. It's just a wood piece. I've stained it, and I just painted it black on the front. 
And that's all I'm going to do. But like I said, a 10 by 20 canvas would be a great uh, piece to put them on if you want to do them on canvas. You want to do one more of a regular shaped um, canvas or board. I stretched him out just to fit here. I like that tall shape for my gnomes, but you can certainly just do him on a little canvas too. Just wouldn't have such a long hat. So I'm going to use shades of green. So I think I'll go with a lighter shade of green up on his hat, darker on his body. I'm going to use that lime green that I have. I'm just using a flat brush, synthetic, it's probably a 10. And I'm going to just paint his hat. And as you guys know, the acrylic colors are not uh, the easiest to get to cover sometimes. So we will let it dry, put a couple coats. So don't try to put the paint on super thick to try to get it to cover in the first or second coat. You're better off with a nice thin coat, let it dry and put on as many coats as you need to get the desired effect, but it prevents you from getting those thick um, brush strokes. And, and if you smooth out your paint, you'll have a nicer finish. You don't want to see big globs of paint. You want to do a nice thin coat. And I'm going to just fill that in and let it dry. While that's drying, I can work on his body and his beard. Has anyone thought ahead to Easter and St. Patrick's Day? I've got lots of fun projects. I thought we would do St. Patrick's Day before we jump into Easter. I did this gnome as a Valentine's gnome too. You might have seen that video. He was pretty cute, too. Everybody's still loving the gnomes, right? I know there's a few gnome haters, but people just love them. So what the great thing about sketching your design in the chalk is, I know I can see the little chalk lines. Once I'm done with the painting, I just wipe those away. Wet brush on my finger. So you don't have to be a slave trying to follow the line. Paint it in and not worry about that. Okay, so we've got a lime green hat on him. And again, I always encourage you guys use whatever color you like. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I like to show you what I'm doing, but I really love it when you go your own way. So I'll give you the basics, but I really want you to um, do your own thing. Oh, thank you, Lisa Marie. Um, yes, I, if you hit the bell, apparently, oh, you were probably on um, YouTube then. And if you hit the bell, you would get notified. So another way to get notified while I am chatting away is on this phone number. If you text me on my cell, 978-315-5650, you'll get a little heads up before I go live. So either of those ways. Facebook. Okay, okay, there's a bell there too. I'm so confused a little bit by all of the different social media platforms, but uh, I appreciate your input. So you guys keep me, um, keep me informed. <laughs> hey, Linda. Nice to see you. Hopefully I'll see you tonight. I'm going to go for a darker green for my little body. I say body there. It's probably like a little coat. I don't know. These gnomes have little crazy outfits. I am painting this first because I like to paint from the background forward sometimes because this way I get my little green garment painted and then we'll put the, the beard on top and it will lay nicely on top rather than do our fluffy beard and then try to paint around it to get the little garment here painted. We are painting this first. And I really didn't mix my yellow and my green very well and that is because I like the way it looks sort of a little darker and lighter here. A personal preference, I paint a little with a little more color. I paint um, very painterly. I like to see the brush strokes. I like to see the color mixes. If you would prefer, though, you just mix up the color you like and just keep mixing it, even with your palette knife or your brush, and you can get the one tone. I like to see a little light and dark here and there. So this, I know, doesn't show up a lot because of the black, but we're going to let it dry, and then you'll be able to, to see them a little better. I know the glare from the, from the shiny paint sometimes is an issue. We'll let that dry, put a few coats. The shoes will go on afterwards. We can certainly start putting on, um, I'm going to put the base coat of his beard on, only because I want to work a little quickly so that I don't um, take all your time up. But if you want to watch the little gnome painting, that is, um, won't take too, too long. So I'm going to paint um, the base coat of his beard, and then I will do the subsequent coats of his coat and be able to get all the little details on top. But for now, I'm going to start it dark. I work dark to light a lot. 
I love when you get a dark, dark base coat and you get a little lighter and a little lighter and that final coat with the really bright colors, everything seems to pop. So that's why I'm using the burnt sienna. It's just a red brown. I'm going to just scoot around his nose a little bit here and I'm just basing it in to get one coat. As you can see, it's going to need a few coats, but I'd like to just get some of this color blocked in to begin with. I'd love to know what you guys have been painting. Do you paint gnomes all year? Yep, I do. Um, I love gnomes. I love gnomes back when they were popular in the 80s. Um, remember back in the day, was it, what was it, Jordan Marsh or Macy's maybe had gnomes as, as their theme and they had gnomes on their bags. And I just love those, that gnome book that was out. I forget who was the author with all those beautiful illustrations. I love them at Christmas when you can get um, the, the little red and green gnomes. It, and they're great for any holiday and they're great for every day. People love them. It's just, if you're looking to sell your work, uh, anything gnome related really sells well. But when you can theme it with a seasonal uh, aspect or a holiday, it's really kind of fun because it's, you can, you can paint a bunch of these up and, and you don't have to really find a place for them. You can put one out next holiday, change it up, put the other one out. It's not like you have to have lots of wall space. So I am just getting that little bit of a basic uh, beard. I'm not going to worry about the nose and the shoes yet. I'm going to go and put my second coat on my hat. I do have my heat gun handy. If you want to have a heat gun or a hair dryer handy, it does speed up the dry time, which is kind of nice if you are impatient like me. So I actually am not going to worry about that. That's dry, so I'm not going to have to put that on. I sometimes hate to when I'm recording um, or going live. The noise just, just is kind of irritating. So sometimes I can just mute it, but let's just see if we can get away with putting our second coat of green. Now this lime green does have a little bit of white in it. And, it, and when you're painting, especially the acrylics, you know when it's transparent, a good way to get it to be a little more opaque is add a little white to your paint. If it's a real light color like yellow and I'm going on a dark surface, I will base coat that whatever I'm painting in yellow or orange in white. And that way, when the white dries and I pop on my light color, it really, really does um, not come out dark and streaky. It really shows up nicely. So keep in mind that you can always use white under your colors or mix a little with your colors to get it more opaque. I do like the heavy body acrylics too. I've been using those quite a bit lately for my landscapes and things. And... If you haven't tried them, I actually used a coupon. Uh, Joanne still has the good coupon for 40 and 50% off. And I got a big 62 or some crazy amount of tubes of the Liquitex heavy body paints in the tubes. It was great because it's a big set, includes all the colors. And it's a great little, they're small tubes, but it's a great way to start to see if you like those heavy body acrylics. I like them for landscapes and things because um, they look, they feel a lot like my, my oil paints, and uh, I love my oil paints. Hi, Kit. How are you? Nice to see you here. Kit and Linda are members of my art membership. I do have, I do a lot of paintings on here for you guys, little free tutorials and, and paintings, and I'll throw a class out there every now and then, but I do have a paid art membership called Tinker's Cardists. And inside there we do a lot of painting, like tonight we're doing a Zoom tutorial that will be about painting animals. Just some tidbits and some tricks and, and whatnot when you're painting animals. We are painting a, a cute little spring bunny pretty soon. And I thought a nice precursor to that would be um, that little tutorial. I have my little bunny hand here. A lot of cool paintings for the group, and I will show them to you. Like, oh, this right here. While I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, this is our little. It's glary. There you go. This is our little spring bunny. We're going to paint inside the art group next week, but tonight we're going to work on features like eyes and noses and how to get the fur effect on them. But all kinds of fun paintings. Speaking of um, the heavy body acrylics. I painted this for the group for next month. And I know it's, it doesn't look as colorful. Maybe it does. It's got a lot of teal and purple in there, pinks. 
and that's a waterfall painting because I thought we did all kinds of landscapes and we haven't done a waterfall yet. So anyone who's interested in more information about that group, just um, you could just put Cardist in the comments and I will get back to you with that. We open up again in the spring and we'd love to have you join us. Okay, that's drying. This is almost dry. Let's put another coat of our dark green there. And again, like I said, any dark green you have, any color, you could use more muted shades of green if you wanted. You could go brighter than this. I teach you guys how to paint. I do step by step. I get you to follow along, but I love it when you go rogue and come up with your own cool ways to paint things. So I'll give you the basics and you can run with those and and come up with some cool things. All righty. Super simple, not lots of colors are needed for this guy. There we are. Now I am going to hit this with the hairdryer for one second just to dry it up because I am impatient. I will mute it so you don't have to listen to the noise. Oh, Linda, you're the best. I love painting with you. I can't wait to see you guys tonight. And you are do amazing work yourself. So yeah, I'm so proud of all the work that you do. Oh, and a little tip, we, well, how we're going to paint his beard is a little like I paint that fur on my animals. It's a little bit of the same technique. So what I love is when I give you this technique, you can use it for all sorts of things. Um, in our tutorials, we, we do specific little subjects that you can incorporate into other um, paintings. For instance, we did uh, painting transparency not too long ago. We did water drops, we did glassware, we did... Um, sparkly things and that's a little just a little tutorial it wasn't any finished product it's a little tutorial so that next time you're painting a you know a floral you might want to put it in a little ball jar glass vase uh, mason jar or a glass vase just little tips like that that get, get you a little more prepared for other things that you paint on your own all right so the beard now same as with animal fur the beard i paint from the bottom up i want to paint it the way the hair falls so when I do the layers, each layer on top falls on top of the layer below it like actual fur or beard would. So I'm going to probably use two brushes. I'm going to go ahead first with just a filbert probably or a flip. And I'm going to paint it roughly like um, hair. Then I like to finesse it and get some fine lines on top. So I'm going to use, use a flat or you can use a filbert because what I love about it is when you are painting with either a flat or, or a filbert, you can get your nice wide, you get a nice wide stroke. But look, on the chisel edge, you get really a thin stroke as well. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to position that. Yeah, so see so you get a little thin line as well. I love it. I love um, having that ability. So I am going to just take, I'm already base coated in the burnt sienna. I'm going to mix it with a little of the orange. I'm starting at the very bottom. I'll come close so you can see. And I'm just going to make little strokes. I'd like to have it out over the green. I give maybe a little pressure to start the stroke and then lift the brush up a little so I have more of a polywog shaped stroke there. And what I'm doing, this is a base coat. I'm going to go over with little bits of thin hair afterwards. But I'm just a little orange dragging it into my burnt sienna. And I'm going in layers. Can you see I'm going rest across in layers? I'll great. grab more paint as I run out. And can you see how I like to go out over the edge? I'm going out over the edge of the coat. I don't want to stick right in my lines. It will look really contrived and not natural, but we're going to just bring it right out over. I'm trying to uh, do so you can see me at what kind of angle so you can actually see the strokes. See the strokes there? See that one that's right out over? I am going to, starting at the top, working my way down, 
going across in rows. But going right out over the edge. Can you see how nice that's going to be? Kind of a fuzzy, cool beard. And I'm building it up all the way like that. All the way up. And you can see maybe why you can't really start up here and work down because you're cutting off all those nice little thin uh, edges of your stroke that way. So that's why I am working my way up. And I'm feathering it right out over the edge. Again, the strokes are a little, the brush is on the chisel edge. I do, oops, that's a big glob of paint. I do start with a little pressure and then lift. So pressure and lift, and you get that little fishtail or that little thin ending to your stroke, if that makes sense. We've done a lot of brush stroke painting, and I'm gonna show you a little one stroke technique afterwards on the little shamrocks. And that's a fun little stroke, and it may take a little practice, but once you learn it, you can use it to making flowers, making all sorts of things. With one stroke of your brush, you can get your color in, a highlight, a shadow. So it's a fun stroke to just practice sometimes. All right, so this is just the base, but we had burnt sienna to start. I've taken a little burnt sienna, and this orange is actually like a spiced orange or spiced pumpkin. And it's just mixed a little. So you can see there's some darks and lights just from the strokes there. That looks pretty cool as it is, but wait till we finesse it a little more. Let's rinse off that brush because I'm going to go to a thinner brush now. Why don't we work on the beard and get that done? It is the most time consuming part, but it is fun. You'll feel love it when it's done. So I'm gonna just take, now I'm gonna use a liner brush. This is just an acrylic. I know it um, looks a little splayed, but it has a nice point. And the, and the reason these dagger on these liner brushes are great because they hold a lot more paint and you can get a longer line with it. You wanna mix your um, color with some water. I really want this to feel like ink. I don't want it to be paint heavy and draggy. This is where I'm gonna take a good bit of water. I'm put my water there. So I'm taking a good bit of water and I'm gonna mix it with my spiced pumpkin color. And I'm going to thin it down so that it is more like ink. And I'm gonna have a nice full brush and I'm gonna be able to do quite a few strokes. Now, this is the color that we just used, but I'm gonna do some just to get the little strokes on there. Then I'm gonna add a little white to that. And that's how it comes in when I set my dark, middle, lighter, lighter. A little white to this is going to make that orange, that light orange pop. And it's going to be really cool. But to start, I'm just taking a little water into that paint. And let's see if you can see. I'm going to start where I was started on the bottom. Work my way up just like we did with those strokes. Similar. A little more pressure and pull it up. You can get nice long strokes too. So can you see I've got a nice heavy brush load there. Press a little bit pull and get that nice thin edge. I tend to curve a little bit. Middle of the beard, I might have some straight strokes. I might start curving to the side when I get there. So you can see the difference now. You can see these are just the bigger strokes with the chisel brush, uh, the filbert brush rather. That's filbert, I'm sorry, is uh, like a flat brush, but it's rounded on the end a little bit. And now I'm going over with my liner brush with the same orange, but it is standing out a little bit. This has sunk into the background a little when it's dry, so now we're getting it a little brighter, but subtly, not a big jump. Just go back over those layers all the way and work to the top. Like I said, this is a little bit more time consuming, but this little project really takes no time at all. Wait till you see how quick he comes along. And I know some of you guys are watching me on my Tinker's Card Art Facebook page. I also have a private group where we do some cool things on the page. I know some people don't understand how Facebook, uh, the business page is versus the group and all that. The business page where you, if you're watching on Tinker's Card Art is really like my business card. It shows you what I do, tells you a little bit about me. But if you really want to get in and really learn some more things, there is the Learn to Paint with Cheryl group within the page. It's just a smaller group and, and you get notifications a little easier, I think. And you will find you know, a nice little community there. That's a free group. 
it's a good next step if you like the way I paint and what I'm doing. It's a nice uh, precursor to joining the membership at some point if you choose. You want to get digging a little deeper and you know brush up on your skills and really learn a little more. That's something you might want to do when we open in the spring. But for now, if you think of it, just join the Learn to Paint group. And be sure to uh, get your tech number on my text list because that way I can keep you informed. I'll hold that number up again later. So there we are. So you can see now another layer and some depth to the beard. The last one and the most fun is always when it's a little brighter. So again, I'm adding water as I go because I don't want that paint to be thick. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I'm going to mix it with that orange, and it's a lighter shade now. And I won't know really till I put this on if it's going to be light enough. So mix it up, try it, and then you can adjust it whether it needs to be lighter or darker. And a good bit of water. So here we are. This is going to be a fun part when this is because it's a really pop now. And you might not need as many. You might need to go roll after roll. Just a little fewer. And can you see how that shows up now a little bit? I know it's looking a little white on camera, but it really is just a lighter shade of the of the, gin, of the um, spice pumpkin. So I'm just putting that in here and here, there. And then you can leave it be, or you can add some darks if you wanted to go with a little brown umber, if you needed to go back with a little burnt sienna. I'm just building it up, and this is really how I paint a lot of my animal fur, too. We have a cute little... Um, Raccoon that has all the little hairs, different shades of brown, a little white over his eyes. Hey, Michelle. Hi, guys. You guys are good to pop in here. I haven't been on it my lives lately. I've had some issues with um, here with my page. So thanks for your patience. And now I have to uh, jump back in and kind of relearn and get a little more comfortable again in front of the camera. I haven't done a live in a while, so I hope it's going okay on our end. I always, always appreciate feedback. I have no problem with that. I'd love to know what you're thinking, and if anything I can improve on my end, I would love it. Okay, so I'm just working my way up. I'm going, I know I'm going a little faster, so I'm still kind of doing a little pressure of pull, stroke, and this is how you can paint the beard, even if you want to paint it um, just a gray or white beard. Start with gray, mix some of your gray with some white, get a middle shade, and then you can almost end with white. And same exact way, whatever colors you want to use, and we'll see how, how um, it just has a cool look to it. And again, it's a little bit detailed. You might want something a little rougher when we did that first coat, and we just did those big strokes with the filbert. That could be enough. You know, you could just mix up some different shades of color and do those big strokes. I, I don't know why. I just put it like this real detailed look, especially on this little guy. That's where I want you to experiment and find your own path. I am going to maybe throw a few orange ones by itself there. Just I just playing around with it now. I'm just going to add a little bit. And then I'm going to call it done. I just love, I love the ginger beer. What do you guys think? Ginger beard, gray beard. There. And let's see. You can see that a little better now. I know it looks very fringy. I like it. You might like a really rougher looking beard still, but you do what you do. You do you. Love him. Oh, hey, Maggie. Is it dinner time? Oh, God, it is getting to be that time. I don't know where the days go lately. We have a nice spring day in New England today. We have 60 degrees, if you can believe it. It is gorgeous. And I'd love to say, oh, isn't it great that we have spring coming? No, now we have a snowstorm on Friday, so there's, there's New England for you. I'm putting a last coat of this lime green on my hat. I can see a little black through it. But it's nice and dry, and this coat will be all I need. I'll show you a little bit about shading and highlighting. You could very well leave this be, paint the little share marks on his hat, call it done. I like to give it a little dimension, and it's just with shading and highlighting. Now, shading and highlighting with acrylic is not as easy as it is with oils when you have lots of time to put on your base color like this and then go on your edges and get a dark side and a light side and then blend. So I am going to show you how to get around that and almost 
working your acrylics like there are oils. This is a weird size, so I hope you can follow along because I'm trying to get the whole guy in here so you can see him. So I'm going to base coat it first. The paint's going to dry a little fast because I want it to blend. But so what I'm going to do now is what I'm going to do just to make an object rounder, give it form. I give a dark side and a light side. So I'll give let me give a dark side here and I'll give shadow. And then over here I'll make it a little lighter, like this is where the light source is coming from. And I might do the same thing down here. Like it's a little. Uh, I keep calling it a jacket or a coat, whatever that is. But how are we going to do that? How are we going to get the paint to have a nice blend? It's pretty dry here already. So what I'm going to just do is I'm going to work just on this lighter side. I am going to quickly lay in another coat right up. And I'm not using this for coverage. I'm using it more as something that I'll be able to blend in a light. I want to have a light side of it, so I want that to be white. I'm going to take the same brush that I'm using, flat, loaded with lime green. And I'm going to just tip the corner into the white, just tip it right in the white. I'm going to pat it down a little bit so it blends a little bit. This is kind of a one stroke I was talking about. And I'm going to take the side of the brush that has the white paint on it towards me, towards the, up the edge where I want it to be lighter. And I'm just going to go right up that side. And can you see, I'm going to keep just getting a little more white on the corner, patting it when I need to. But I've got lime green on the brush, and I've got white, and I am simply just painting right along that edge. Can you see the white and the green are mixing really right on the brush? And it's giving me that light edge. It's a little stroke that you might want to practice a little bit with, but it makes a nice highlight. And if you want, you know, if you want to practice it, but you don't have it quite yet, here's what you can do. Do the same thing. Paint a strip in of the lime green. Take a little brush, a liner or a small square, lay in white. And then just run your brush off and you can just go ahead and blend those two colors and you want to real quickly and you just blend them together if you need to. Doing this one stroke method though um, kind of does it all in one all in one for you. So that's the lighter side of the highlight. Same thing over here for the dark side. Stride now. So I'm going to take a little bit of that lime green. Just put a stroke of it up. And actually, I'm not even going to go that close to the edge because I want it dark on the edge. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. And this one I'll show you without the one stroke method so that you can see if you are more comfortable just doing it this way. Do it kind of quick. Get that green in there. Take your dark. I'm going to just use that dark thing, little green I have. I'm going to paint it just up the edge. You might want to do maybe a little darker with some black, but I'm just going to go with it as it is there. I'm going to just paint that up the edge. So now I've got just two strips of paint next to each other. I've got the light lime green of the hat, and now I'm going quickly up the edge. I'm just using the chisel edge of my flat, but you might be more comfortable with the round. That's okay. So what I've got is... Lime green next to the green. Take your same brush, dry it off. I use a dry brush technique for so much for blending. And now just put your little flat brush right in the middle where the dark green and the light green mix meet and softly blend. As you pick up too much color, just keep drying it off and go in with your dry brush and you are just softening where those two colors meet. Again, getting rid of the color if you need to. And I just go after where the darker and the lighter color meet. So I can go in there and just soften it a bit. And it just gives a little bit of the illusion of a, being rounded. It's a little stubborn now because it's dry. So to, if I need to finesse it a little more, I'm just taking the lime green on my brush and softening it. If I see that it's too much of just a line still, more lime green, and just blend it in there. Now again, you could just leave it as a lime green hat and put a little decoration on there, polka dots, shamrocks, whatever, and it would be fine. But I always like to add just a little bit something to it. So maybe from, it's, I know the shine is it's a little tough for, it's looking real bright on that other side, but it's really not as bright as it looks there. Down here, 
I'm going to go put a little bit more of that dark green. Just because the black is really showing through and I want it to be a little brighter. I'm not going near the beard. I don't want to touch the beard. And it's actually okay because it's a little darker under there. It serves as a little shadow. So I'm just covering a little bit because it was a little bit of black showing through. And if I want a brighter side over here, light, light, but on the same side, I'm going to take my lime green down the right side. And this is still wet that I just put it in there. So I'm working fast enough to blend that. There. So he's just got a little bit of a, I'm not even going to worry about a dark over here. It's dark enough. He needs a little shoes. His shoes could be brown. They could be whatever color you like. I'm going to give them, him little lime green shoes. I love, I love lime green. So look, we're just going to make little half moons there. That's a start. Little half moon. And we'll let that dry and we'll just do a little sole. I usually just put a little uh, white sole or something underneath the shoe and we'll give him a little highlight when that gets another coat on it. And we'll paint the flesh of his nose in. Isn't it great? No eyes or mouths or anything. You just have to put his nose. I bring the nose up over the hat a little bit. So I really make a nice circle there. It's black underneath, so it's going to take a few coats. So what I think I might do. Like I said about adding the white to get some better coverage, I'm going to add white and paint that in with mostly white mixed with a little of the flesh color. And the next color too will really cover that way. But I do round it off and make it up over his hat a little bit. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to show you my little technique for little shamrocks. I'm going to do little solid colored shamrocks on his hat. I'm going to get a little fancy around here and make them uh with the one stroke technique which you might like hey christine oh i know i forgot i got these new i got these new glasses they're getting stronger and stronger okay i'm going to take just a small flat it is a four i like to have a little flat to size sometimes because it makes little windows for buildings a perfect shape or little shamrocks I'm going to take my dark green, load my little square brush, and it's going to be just little one-stroke shamrocks on his hat. So I'm going to take a little square brush, trying to see so that you can see, and pressing down, and almost giving it a little twist. I'm just giving three little presses, and a little shamrock appears. So it's the little flat brush loaded with just green, and the stroke is, I am I am taking it to the surface, press a little bit, and then I almost twist, press and twist, and that gives me that little shape. Let me do it on something that you can really see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna grab a big brush and show you the stroke so that you can see it a little bit. Same kind of, you know, it's just a little, just a flat, only bigger. And take it to your surface. Press so, so that so why it opens up a little bit. Press and can you see how I'm twisting my brush a little bit? So it's almost like that little polywog shape. And then chisel edge, you get on the stem. So just press and twist, press and twist. Again, it's practice. So get an old piece of paper or something, just practice that little stroke because it comes in handy. Actually, you know what else it's handy for? If you're painting a Valentine's note, it's just a couple of strokes. And you can get a little hard. So it's good to it's good to practice brush strokes. You can use it in so many ways, and it helps with control of your brush. You'll find even if you're not wanting to use it to make these little shapes, it will give you um, some more control, and you will be a little more comfortable with your brushes. So I am just going to scatter these little shamrocks on his hat. They can be sideways. They can be curved. They could be straight on wherever you want them, just adds a little detail to his little hat. And I've been doing them for a long time, so I do go kind of fast, but really you will get it 
with just some practice here and there. I have some videos on brushstroke painting, I believe. They might be on YouTube. If you look on my YouTube channel, uh, Tinker's Card Art, follow me there. I believe I have some brushstroke recordings there. And one more, maybe it needs a couple more. Let's see. Something missing over here. I could even put a little half of one sticking out. But there's our little hat with the little shamrocks. I'm going to do a second coat on his nose. I am going to put another coat on his shoes. Imagine how much, how fast we'd paint if we didn't have to do all the multiple coats of paint. But that's the way it is, especially painting on black like this. So that's another coat. I'm going to finish it with a third coat when that dries. A little bit of lime green on his shoes. This is just basic filling in the the space. Just another coat. I think that will do it for the shoes. What I do to finish them off is only a little, take a liner brush or round. I take white and I just put a little line across here that is like a little sole of his shoe. I know that um, there's some white chalk showing through, but that's okay. So I just go right around the bottom there and I give them these little comma strokes just on the right side, just two little comma strokes. Make it look like he maybe has a little shine on his shoes. Let his nose dry. Now you could very well, I, I like, I use um, spirals and dots a lot and I love that. I'm going to take a lime green with a lot of white, it's very light. I am going to thin my paint down quite a bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail onto his coat that will be little spirals. And it's very watery paint and I want it to be sort of see-through like that. So I'm just gonna press the brush and... I am not worried about a fine line. Can you see it's all feathered and sprayed out a little bit? I go one way, I go the other. It's not solid white, it's very light. I want a little green tint to it still. Some could be littler, some could be bigger. Isn't it fun? It just adds a little, a little extra touch. Again, you could just use the back end of the brush and just put polka dots on there if you wanted to. But, you know, I can't just leave more on it alone. I have to add a little something, something. I love little spirals though. I have a tree of life painting that you'll find out there on YouTube and that is a lot of little spirals on it. It's really cool. So we've got a nice little detail, little commas on his shoes. We've got those little spirals. The beard is pretty detailed, which is cool. Hat. That nose is still drying, but let's go up here. I'm going to just paint that green shamrock that's hanging from his hat. Now, what color do we want to do that? Let's see. Let's just go into a mix up a middle shade of green. So I'm just going to mix a little yellow in my green and I'm just going to fill in that. Actually, it's very light. You can see it. You can hardly see it. It's all that black showing through. So I'm going to go and use the lime green because it has the white in it. Look at how much better it shows up. I'm just making a little shamrock shape here. We'll give it a little shading and highlighting. But that's that. I want to show you. Do we need I don't know if we need to do shamrocks behind him. That would be too busy to do shamrocks behind. I'm going to leave a little one on his hat. I'm going to use that one hanging off his hat as a little tiny detail. If you wanted to, I am going to take a little, um, the back end of one of my brushes, and I'm going to take little white dots, and I'm putting them just in the middle of my shamrocks, just because I can. It could be a light green and then just pop into the white. It just gives a little bit another layer of detail. I did a lot of decorative painting back in the day, and that sort of shows through with a lot of the little details that I put put in. Oh hey Ace, you are quite welcome. Alberta, you're quite welcome. Thanks for watching. Hi Trudy. Hey Mary, how are you? Miss you guys at the main my main friends. So, okay. Now we are almost done. Let's finish up his nose. 
And it doesn't take long, right? And I've been yapping a lot, so it doesn't really take long. You guys could, could whip these out pretty quickly. And this is a great little item if you were going to do craft fairs or shows and things, um, is to do something with gnomes. But these guys, you could have them all lined up with all the different seasons, and people would go crazy. <laughs> Trudy. So keep it in mind, if you want to make a little extra money or a side hustle, you could certainly. Gnomes are simple, and people love them. Um, and... As a side note, in my membership, we do all those more detailed paintings. We do simple ones and detailed, but those are all also, if you are in the membership, you can use those to paint and sell at craft fairs or paint um, and teach, teach the paintings. You can, uh, I'll show you how to do it. And if you have, you know, do paint notes yourself or, you know, want to do them, you can use my designs if you're a member of my group. Um, okay, those. Knows, knows, knows. And any, any questions about any of this, you guys can just reach out to me by message or send me a text. And I, I cover the nose with the, with the flesh pretty good. And I like to put a little blush on top, and then I give him that little, uh, that nose, the little comma, so it makes it look a little shiny and rounded. So for the blush, I usually use like a red mixed down, or I'm going to try, I had the salmon out on my palette, and I'm sort of using the brush, one stroke brush technique again. I'm just taking my brush and taking that little salmon color just on the top edge. I just want it to have a little dark on the top edge. But you can see in one stroke, I got that there. It's sort of a blended. I can dry my brush off and just soften it. So if you want to try practicing your one stroke, go ahead. If you want to do it as painting the nose in the flesh color while it's wet, do a little line of your shade, shadow color, dry off your brush, and just use that and soften the two colors together. It'd be great. Hey, Sherry. Hi, Annette. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's relaxing for me to paint, so I'm glad that you're here and uh, getting back in the swing of things. So let's give this another coat on this little shamrock up here. And what I'm going to do is make the, each of these little petals a little darker on one side, a little lighter on the other, simply by um, the same brush, get a little darker on one corner. And I'm just going to brush that in. I could probably do all three petals, so I've just got a dark on both ones on the sides. I know it's hard to see on the camera there, but maybe that. And I'm going to do the same thing with a little white on the other. I'm going to dip my brush into the lime green paint just to coat the brush. Take a tiny bit of white on the corner. I always pat down to the tiny bit to blend it a little bit. So there's not too much paint going on. And just simply going to stroke down the uh, left side with a little bit of that white to make it a little lighter side. I know it's a lot of detail on just a tiny little shamrock. Um, but I think it's nice to have a painting that's not so super simple that has a little has a little bit of detail to it. And we didn't really struggle and it wasn't hard. I'm popping a little white dot in the middle of my shamrock. And there he is. And let's look at them from the far. Remember, guys, look at your paintings from a distance. Nobody is looking at your gnome. They're not the craft guys saying, oh, I love this gnome. They're five feet away. So step back from your paintings, and you'll get a better idea of what it looks like, what it might need. These guys are so simple, you don't have to really critique it and, and add things. But on paintings, when you're painting, stand away from it. Maybe sometimes just step away and let it sit for a day or so, and then use fresh eyes on it. Put it on camera or in a mirror you will be surprised at how quickly something that might have been bothering you pops out. Take a picture of it. All of that just for some reason works. So here's our little Nolmy. What's What shall his name be? Seamus? What should we name our gnome? Okay, so I don't want to keep you guys all day, but I've been dying to paint him. So I wanted to pop on. I've got some other little uh, cool things. I want to do some fabric painting, some little tutorials, some more glass. I did a cute gnome, um, this like this gnome head on wine glasses, which the tutorial for that is on YouTube. So check out my YouTube channel. You'll find some fun projects there. And any questions, let me know. And again, if you want to go on my list, you can screenshot that if you want. Text me there. I don't bug you only uh, when something's going on or I'm going online to paint. So anyways, the beard. Yes, Sherry, don't, I like the beard. I know it's a little detailed, but it's not a hard technique. So you could, you know, you could incorporate that for beards, animal fur, um, all kinds of things. So thank you guys. O'Reilly, there you go. That's what we, Linda, that's what sorry, your name is. So I'm going to go. So I will see you guys late, um, Linda and Kit, maybe later on. Um, and... It was so fun to paint with you guys. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.